Hello, we're halfway through autumn and halfway through this 10 day trend. We're going to see a big switch in our weather from the fairly still, misty, murky and largely dry weather to something much wetter and much windier. On the 38th anniversary of the great storm, our pressure patterns couldn't look much different. Big area of high pressure that's been with us for a number of days and it's not moving too far too quickly. Still in place certainly for the rest of this week. Why is it not moving? Well, if we take a look at what's going on high in the atmosphere, the position of the jet stream dipping down to the south and then arching way up to the north. This amplified jet stream allows high pressure to sit across the UK and turning around this area of low pressure just basically keeping this churning away out in the the Atlantic. But changes are afoot as we go through the weekend. Fast forward to Monday and it's all changed. We've replaced high pressure with low pressure and the jet is in a different position. Not particularly angry looking but a much more zonal jet is sending low pressure systems our way. And by this stage the high pressure has been ousted and pushed across into uh, Europe, into mainland Europe. So we are going to see that dramatic change. The reasons behind that could have something to do with an ex-typhoon. More on that in a moment. First of all, let's rewind the clock because the high pressure is still with us, certainly for the next couple of days. There's a lot of cloud trapped under that high pressure. Some breaks in the cloud revealing a bit of sunshine here and there. Uh, if you want more on that high pressure and why the cloud is trapped under the inversion, you can watch either Alex Burkill's uh, deep dive from last week or Aiden uh, from yesterday. They talked quite a lot about the high pressure and the inversion and what it means. But what it means for us weather-wise is that generally it stays cloudy for the next couple of days. Some light showers at times across northern Scotland and along the south coast of England. But most places will be dry with temperatures as they have been creeping into the low teens. That area of high pressure then continues through into the start of the weekend. But we do start to see a change during Saturday. The first weak weather front tries to push in and then it gets a bit of a, a boost. Another area of low pressure. These weather fronts do finally edge in during the weekends. There was a bit of uncertainty about the timing, but um, most of the models are now agreeing or certainly within five or six hours of the time of this band of rain sweeping in from west to east. So a few spots of rain likely in the west on Saturday, but otherwise a lot of dry weather on Saturday. Still predominantly cloudy although a bit more hopeful as the breeze picks up we'll see a bit more sunshine coming through but all change through the weekend because we will see by Sunday that band of rain moving from west to east and the winds picking up also so the weekend is the transition from a dry start to a wet end why are we seeing that change? Why are we seeing that transition? Well, for that, we need to look at uh, the big picture, the really big picture. Again, we'll be looking at the winds high in the atmosphere and what the jet is doing, but we need also to look at uh, a global picture. This is the uh, view down from the North Pole, looking down on the North Pole, rather. Uh, here's North America. Here's the UK in here and uh, the greens and the yellows, well, that's basically the jet stream. The wind's at 200 hectopascals and you can see the jet's fairly messy across the Western Hemisphere, not particularly strong anywhere. We've got quite an amplified pattern as we saw earlier. This is going back in time to last Friday when the jet was reasonably active actually across Asia here. And what I want to draw your attention to right at the top of the charts, this little black circle in here, is Typhoon Halong. Typhoon last Friday, during the course of last Friday, it transitioned from a typhoon, skirted away from Japan and started to track further uh, north and westwards across the Pacific. At this stage, not really interacting with the jet stream, but if we move forward to Saturday, no longer a typhoon. Now uh, it's transitioned, it's gone through extra tropical transition. So just like uh, hurricanes do in the Atlantic, it then just becomes uh, an area of low pressure and interacting with the jet stream. It's got a lot of energy, so it's pushing the jet stream along. It's one of those ones where we often talk about the jets, you know, moving low pressure systems around, but because this is a, a tropical system of tropical origin, it can affect the jet stream and it's really energizing the jet stream, pushing it into North America. By the time we get to Sunday, 
If we zoom in a little bit further, you can see the remnants of that typhoon into quite, turned into quite a powerful area of low pressure. A lot of isobars on the chart that barreled into Alaska, bringing some uh, devastating conditions to some of the coastal communities here with strong winds, a big storm surge, and of course, some heavy rain. Why I'm showing you this is because it's energizing the jet stream, pushing that energy through the upper atmosphere, which then will have downstream effects, really energizing the jet stream and making it more zonal across North America and eventually that will ripple down out into the Atlantic to affect us. I can show you that perhaps better if we revert back to our graphics and come back to the here and now. So there's our area of high pressure that's been around uh, for a long time. Let's flip over into the Pacific and you can see now the jet stream highly energized here. There's another deep area of low pressure heading its way into Alaska. But what we're showing you here is how that jet stream, that amplified jet stream in North America is being shifted by that extra pulse that's coming in from the far northwest, energizing the jet stream, making it more of a zonal pattern. And we flip that and push that energy further down the jet stream. Eventually it ripples through right across the Atlantic. And that is why the jet stream for us is also changing. Not particularly active, as I said earlier, but um, strong enough to push this area of low pressure in initially and then waiting in the wings. As you can see, there are further low pressure systems to come in through next week. So we've really just opened the door to that change where we've had the static uh, weather pattern for the past several days. We are going to see things much more changeable, much more unsettled as we go into it next week with that low coming in, the bands of rain on the weather fronts followed by plenty of showers and the isobars close together as well. So we're expecting some uh, fairly gusty winds, whereas the winds have been very light for much of the past few days. The probability uh, plot shows that transition quite nicely. The dates going along the bottom there into next week. The red colors indicating that high pressure is uh, dictating our weather at the moment. We'll continue to do so for the next couple of days. The change in shade is as that high starts to move away rather than sitting over as the darker reds uh, becoming more of a Scandinavian high sitting uh, across the near continent, the, the slightly more orangey reds there. But then they get lost completely as we go into next week and the blues take over. That means the weather pants much more uh, mobile and dictated generally by low pressure systems either sitting close to the south of the UK or springing in plenty of bands of showers from the northwest. So we're going to see that change. That low pressure comes in through the weekend, sitting around on Monday as we saw. And the most likely pressure pattern actually still has that low close by on Tuesday, over 40% chance when we run the uh, ensemble models, when we run the model many times, that that is the most likely pressure pattern through the early part of uh, next week. And the blues here, the rainfall anomaly, so wetter than average across much of, uh, well, across all of England, Wales, and parts of eastern Scotland. The western Scotland may be drier than average, but it doesn't mean it's going to be dry. And with a northerly wind, it will be on the chilly side as well. So we are seeing that switch, and it is likely to last uh, certainly through much of next week. That's the most likely pressure pattern for Tuesday, and we keep low pressure nearby for most of next week. Just picked out a couple of the ensembles, uh, the, uh, the model runs from the European through next week, because they're all kind of showing the same thing with that low nearby for Tuesday. And then January with low pressure sitting up to the northwest of the UK. Most of the model, most of the ensemble members have this low up here. But I just wanted to flag this one because uh, a couple of them are showing quite deep areas of low pressure potentially tracking towards the south. Now this is over a week away, so can't be trusting any one particular ensemble, but it just shows it had that indication that we could uh, uh, keep our eyes open for low pressure systems that could get a little angry coming in across parts of the south, particularly around the middle to latter part of next week. But all of the ensembles pretty much are showing low pressure nearby, bringing showers or longer spells of rain for most of next week. Wouldn't be hard to be wetter than it has been, but, but much wetter, you know, more typical autumn weather, spells of rain moving through with something a bit drier and a bit brighter in between. The winds will be stronger than they have been this week as well. So you'd expect with low pressure, could see some quite strong winds, particularly if those lows develop close to parts of the south. And that's something we need to keep an eye on. Temperatures generally around about average with the winds coming in from the west. Perhaps the southwest would see temperatures a little bit above average, particularly so by night, and especially if it does uh, brighten up at times. But then towards the end of the next week, 
Well, that could uh, change. There are some signals from some of the computer models that we could see something a little colder as we head into the following weekend. So I want to show you some of our new graphics now. Big shout out to Aiden again, who's been developing uh, these. And this is the probability when we run the model many times, the ensemble uh, uh, run of the European model, you can work out percentages, the likelihood of certain things happening. And here we're plotting the probability of reaching 10 degrees next Thursday, so Thursday the 23rd of October, with those yellow colours, a uh, high probability up over 90%, so very strong chance that we're going to be over 10 degrees uh, a week on Thursday. Whereas further north, that probability drops off, certainly over the highlands of Scotland, the chance is, is pretty low. At low levels across uh, northern areas, it's around about 50-50, so it's probably going to be in that ballpark of 10 degrees. But I want to show you this because if you fast forward to Sunday, into the weekend, we lose a lot of those yellows. The probability of reaching 10 degrees is dropping off. So that is a strong indicator, indicator uh, that it, it may well be getting a bit colder as we head into that weekend. And of course, that is, uh, for many places, the start of the half term week. So I just wanted to flag that because it, it might be quite interesting. Again, something to track as we go through next week and something we'll have more on, of course, in next week's 10 day trends. That could be worth tuning into if you are interested in the half term weather. One more shout out to give uh, Dan Holly, our deputy chief, uh, pointed out those links and from, from Typhoon Halong and how that could have downstream impacts on our jet stream. So big thanks to Dan. He often gives us uh, help when we're doing these 10 day trends and our deep dives. Thank you very much for watching and do keep up to date with the day to day variations in our weather. And the best way, of course, to do that is to subscribe to our YouTube channel.